Hey everyone welcome back to another episode of r slash pro revenge. In today's episode. Break my phone, you'll pay for the damage. Best college speaker ever. Making a trip to the bathroom sexual feat. Karen. Before we get into today's episode, remember to subscribe so you never miss a video. So let's get started. Break my phone, you'll pay for the damage. Hello wonderful people of Reddit. I have a lot of time to myself today, my friend, employer is taking the kids out for a walk, and I decided to post my own personal story of revenge here after my friend suggested it, she also insisted on helping with my username so thanks for that. I was always the kid people picked on at school. The girls would spread rumors about me and the boys would harass me non-stop. See, I'd always known that I wanted to be a nanny, I loved babysitting and looking after kids so it seemed like a natural career choice for me. I made the mistake of telling this to a girl who I thought was my friend and she proceeded to tell everyone at school. As this was perceived as, feminine, I instantly became the target for bullies. There was one boy who loved to terrorize me. I'll call him Jack for the sake of this story. Jack was awful. He would follow me home whilst throwing things at me, vandalize my schoolwork, call me disgusting names, steal my stuff, cut my hair in class etc. I was terrified of him. It got to the point where I couldn't sleep from the fear of having to deal with him at school the next day. I blame him and his friends for the anxiety I had, and still somewhat have to this day. I reached breaking point not long after Christmas when I was 15. My family never had a lot of money but we got by. My mom had saved for ages in order to buy me my first phone. No it wasn't the newest model but I didn't care. I was so grateful to have my first phone, and a little guilty that my mom had gone without her new Christmas outfit and had put off fixing her own phone to buy it for me. Once the schools went back after Christmas break, Jack found out about my phone. He took it from me and proceeded to read through my messages, making fun of me for the lack of contacts and telling my mom I loved her, then threw it to the floor and stomped on it in front of his friends. I was furious, upset and devastated this d asterisk asterisk k head had destroyed something that my mom had worked so hard to buy for me. I started planning my revenge. I knew through the grapevine that Jack's mom was a stay at home mom. His dad had a well paid job and his mother was quite happy to stay at home with the kids 4 year old twin girls. I also knew, however, that she didn't get to go out much as Jack would flat out refuse to babysit and she was pretty picky when it came to who was allowed to look after her kids. I used to babysit her friend's little boy and was pretty good at it, if I do say so myself. However, for my plan to work, I had to babysit Jack's siblings. I made a few comments here and there to the little boy's mom about wanting to get a few more babysitting jobs so I could save up some money for my mom's upcoming birthday. As luck would have it, the lady recommended me to Jack's mom, since it had been so long since she'd been able to go out with the girls. For the next few weeks I'd go to Jack's house with the other little boy I was babysitting and look after his little sisters. Despite Jack's awful attitude his family were all pretty nice, his little sisters were an absolute joy to look after. Jack wasn't usually in the house but when he was I could see that it killed him to have to be civil to me, his mom would have flipped out if he'd been horrible to me in front of her or his little sisters they'd have quickly ratted him out. Once I decided enough time had passed, I put my plan into action. See Jack was one of those creepy kids that liked to brag about his, adult magazine stash in his bedroom. This made him cool to his friends, never understood why tbh. Anyways, every time I'd babysit and put the little ones to bed, I'd sneak into his bedroom and search around. I know this is a massive invasion of privacy but I was a stupid 15 year old kid and I couldn't take his bullying anymore. I eventually found his stash and made a mental note that they were in a bag in his closet. I'd been observant those few weeks so I knew that Jack's mom and dad had an unopened bottle of vodka in the fridge, they didn't drink a lot and it was only for when they were going to parties. One night, once the little ones were asleep and Jack was out with his friends, I went to the fridge, opened the bottle of alcohol and tipped about a quarter of it down the sink, his parents could afford to buy a new one by the way, if they couldn't I'd never have done it, and snuck up to Jack's bedroom and his the bottle in the same bag as his stash. His parents found out about it not too long later, and after Jack accused me of taking it they showed up at my door. They weren't angry because they still didn't know who had taken it so they asked me some questions. I denied everything but was polite and even offered to help them look for it in case it had been misplaced. 
They thanked me but told me. That it was fine, they'd find it. And oh boy did they find it. I was called over the next day to look take the little ones to the park for an hour or so. In order for them to have a talk with Jack, they didn't like arguing in front of the twins, it had frightened them. When I got back, Jack was in his bedroom, if the noises were anything to go by he was crying. It turns out that he'd ratted himself out. His parents found the bottle of alcohol in his room along with his adult magazines, his mother hated anything like that as she found it to be degrading to women, she humiliated him by gossiping to the neighbors about his unhealthy obsession with S asterisk X. He denied everything and accused me of planting the alcohol there. When asked why I'd do that, he ratted himself out by saying that it was payback for him breaking my phone. His parents flipped out. They'd had no idea their son was such a bully. They took away his phone, grounded him and made him sell his games console to pay to get my phone fixed, I had been saving up the money myself for a few weeks. His face when they made him hand me the money will stay with me forever. His parents questioned me about the bullying, eventually informing my mom as well, I'd hidden it from her and told her I dropped my phone. He got into a lot of crap at school after a few other kids came forward about the bullying they'd endured at the hands of Jack and his friends. A few of them, including Jack, got suspended. Jack's parents even made him got to the door to apologize to the people he tormented. I was reluctant to take the money at first as it was way over the amount it would cost to get my phone fixed so his parents compromised and told me to take enough to at least cover the repair cost. Needless to say, with the phone repair covered, I managed to get my mom an awesome birthday gift. I now this is really long and really badly written, I'm not a writer so please forgive me for any errors. Best college speaker ever. When finishing up my degree in criminal justice we had to learn about how the justice system works and how sometimes it doesn't. For about two weeks we studied a case from the early 90s of a woman that had killed her husband. Because the case is public record and a very interesting read look up Betty Freeberg 1993. The setting was small town Iowa and the husband was the town drunk. Everyone in town knew him for a drunk, a brawler, a womanizer and overall just a bad person. His wife was the stay-at-home mom as she wasn't allowed to work or leave the house aside from get groceries. He would go home, beat her and violate her sexuality and the cycle would go on and on and the whole town knew. Neighbors were a quarter mile down the road but still would call the police when they heard noises. It was well documented and because he was never a threat to their daughter the police did nothing aside from take him to jail like a revolving door. Each time he got out had beat her up again. Their daughter was away at college but came home for Thanksgiving. While the father was at work the daughter told the mother that her father had violated her sexuality and that she had even had an abortion because of it. This was the breaking point for the mother. She got her revenge 100 fold. When daughter went back to school after the holidays and husband came home she killed him with his gun at the kitchen table. The table is important because it was a big farm table used for chopping up deer and other livestock. Doing the butchering was her job and she was good at it. If I could find the case report it has pictures of the table and clear marks of chopping. She chopped up her husband and scattered his body over neighboring farms, fed what she could to her livestock and cleaned up. Months went by and winter came and left. Police investigating his disappearance even questioned her while sitting at the table drinking coffee. She explained the marks on the table by explaining that she butchered her own meat and showed the officers her deep freeze. The investigation went on for months until finally a neighbor's dog brought back a body part. They identified it as belonging to him and she was arrested on the spot. She plead not guilty and refused any offers. It went to trial and 12 of her peers judged her not guilt due to extenuating circumstances. She confessed to the crime, explained why she did it and how and that she had no real choice because no one was going to help her. The farm was hers and she refused to give it up as it had been her family's home. She was let go entirely for the murder charge. The next week we had Betty as a speaker to the class to discuss the case and she was awesome. At the time she ironically sold dismemberment insurance for Aflac. Betty if you ever read this know you're seen as a figurehead for battered women and you pulled off the best revenge I have ever been able to study. Making a trip to the bathroom sexual feat. Karen. So this was a while ago and my native language isn't English, so the dialogue might not be 100%, sorry for that. I was about 18 or 19 at the time and babysat our neighbor's 3-year-old boy. 
He loved animals, it was the middle of spring, so nice and warm. So I decided to ask his mother if it would be fine to take him to a petting zoo in the city. Everybody was excited, me included, so we went. We had a ton of fun, he got a large amount of animal feed so he could enjoy himself. Nothing was weird up until this point, nobody was staring and I felt it was pretty obvious that I wasn't in fact his mother but rather than that just babysitting him. Now came the time the little guy needed to pee. Not a problem, I thought to myself, so I took him to the toilets. There was a large line in front of the women's bathroom, but since I had to accompany him, because he was too young to use the adult toilets himself, we couldn't just go to the men's bathroom, which was empty. I figured waiting in line for a minute or two was not going to be an issue though. Enter Karen. K. Hi, um excuse me. She tapped me on the shoulder. Me, yes, I thought since she had a little girl with her she might just wanted to ask to skip ahead in the lane because her little girl needed to pee badly. K, is this your child? Me, oh, no this is my neighbor's child, I'm just babysitting today. K, why the fuck are you taking him to the bathroom then? She got very aggressive straight away. Me, excuse me, he needs to use the restroom, and is clearly too young to do so by himself. So obviously I'm accompanying him? What am I supposed to do? Let him just pee his pants? K. This is highly inappropriate. Only his parent should accompany him to the restroom. He is a boy and on top of that not even your child. God knows what you might do in there with him. Okay so now I was getting kind of pissed. At that point in my life I had dealt with a lot of bullshit from people, since I was a nurse and people in the hospital tend to be entitled as hell when they don't get their way. I was absolutely capable of defending myself with words and I already lost my temper with her being so rude. So I said, very loudly. You think I would look at his penis in there? You what the hell why do you have to make a bathroom trip with a small child sexual? Do you think about that when you take your girl to the bathroom? Oh my god, would you do stuff to your girl? Ew that is disgusting. Why would you even think about something sexual when thinking about a little boy going to the bathroom? Now I said all of these things kind of very sarcastically as it was just meant to scare her off. But obviously I said it loud enough for a lot of people to hear. Now everybody looked at her disgusted and whispered or even chimed in with me to tell her thinking stuff like that was disgusting and that she should leave me alone. She looked mortified at this point and just backed away and left. Moral of the story, please let people take children to the bathroom peacefully, because I couldn't have just let that poor boy pee his pants. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.